Hello, good evening, and welcome to tonight's edition of Minority Caucus here on Joy News TV. And this, of course, is our last edition in the series of the program, which started some couple of weeks ago. My name is Peter Bamfo, and uh, I am sitting in for your regular host, Obobia Dako Opoku, who is out of the jurisdiction on an equally important assignment. Now, as it is our last edition, do permit me, of course, to express our profound gratitude to the entire multimedia management and staff uh, who have graciously provided the space. And of course, most importantly, the technical supports that we need to bring you this program with the objective of helping shape the political discourse and also make available to you, our loyal viewers, the life-transforming policies of the NDC led by His Excellency John Dramani Mahama and Professor Jane Nana Opoku Ajiman. Now to you, our cherished viewers, the National Communications Bureau of the NDC, led by lawyer Sami Jemfi, would like to say a very big thank you to you for not just making time to follow this particular program, but also being an active participant as well through the messages that we have been sending. Now, the rescue mission is still on. It is not over until it is over. Now, you do know very well that in some few days, Ghanaians are going to go to the polls to put an end to the despotism. We shall end the rule of tyranny, of this worst form of nepotism, of the cronyism, and of course, the lawlessness ever unleashed on us as a nation. Now, in some few days, we shall vote to restore the dignity of our gallant uniformed men and women who have become punching bags in the hands of thugs created by this very government, who are all over the place masquerading as national security operatives. They attack and beat soldiers. They beat police officers. They beat anything at all that they find. And guess what? Nobody dares touch them. I haven't seen this anywhere, that you have a country that persons have been empowered to assault military officers, police personnel. It's never happened. And uh, if you will not honor our heroes, I have always maintained that do not send your attack dogs after them. Because any nation, any nation that attacks its national heroes, of course, constitutes an attack on the nation itself. Now, you do recall last week, W.O. One Mashut Salia, a physical instructor with the One B.N., who was bitten to a pulp, handcuffed and dragged away. And I, 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 I do also very recall very much the pledge we as a country made to ourselves after that dastardly attack on the life of Major Adams Mahama, leading to his untimely death. And we said to ourselves that never again would we allow such a thing to ever happen to any officer, whether he has retired or is in active service? Indeed, one would have expected that as Commander-in-Chief, the President would have acted swiftly to raise the morale of these uniformed men. For four solid days, our President pretended not to have heard the attack on W.O. 1 Salia. And we have seen these stories countless number of times. It is important that tonight we take a look at this issue and find out what really is happening to our uniformed men. Why can they not operate in peace without them being attacked by tax created by this government? We are going to go for a quick commercial break. When we return, Comrade Peter Buama Otokuno, Deputy General Secretary of the NDC and a Deputy National Coordinator for the John Mahama 2020 campaign uh, will be joining me and we'll take a look, of course, at the journey so far uh, and what we should expect on December 7th. I'm very sure that you may have heard of the $40,000 bribe which we saw our President Ekufuadu in that video receiving with his two hands. Now, that video has a story to tell, and we're here tonight to tell you all of that story. I'm sure you may have also heard 
of the 52.5 billion CDs, which was transferred from GCB's account to an unknown source. We have heard from the Deputy Auditor General Swansea Wimful, who has confirmed the story. But the interesting twist to all of this is that they have not been able to trace the entire funds, but tell us that they have been able to trace some part of it. When we return, we'll take a deeper look at all this conversation. Don't, don't, don't uh, move your channel, just leave it locked up right here. Uh, when we come back, there's a lot more that the conversation will give you. Stay tuned. You're welcome back. This is Minority Focus here on Joy News TV uh, from that commercial break. And uh, I've already indicated to you that this is the last of the editions of the series. And we are honored this evening uh, to have Comrade Peter Buama Otokuno. He's Deputy General Secretary of the NDC. Uh, he's also the Deputy National campaign coordinator for the John Mahama 2020 campaign. He's my guest tonight. And uh, we're going to look at the journey so far, uh, where we are and where we intend to go. Good evening, Peter. And uh, evening. thank you very much for your time this evening. Good evening. I'm Good sure evening. it's been a very hectic journey so far. And yeah, uh, sure. because of time, you'll just take us through. Where did we start from? Where are we now? And where do we intend to go? Very well. Thank you very much. And um, let me on behalf of the national executives of the party, the leader and flag bearer of the party, I um, also express our heartfelt gratitude to uh, Multi TV for this all important opportunity to use their platform to communicate, to disseminate our very important message that we had for this campaign. I'm sure you would agree with me and everybody else would agree with me that the NDC in the 2020 elections have had the most potent and impeccable message in this campaign. And the rest, obviously, have had no campaign, you know, and no message uh, at all. So um, this opportunity was very, very timely because it provided and afforded us the opportunity to offload our message to the mass of the people. And I think that would be part of the reasons why our campaign has been exceedingly successful and it is going to yield a supermassive victory for President John Dramani Mahama on the 7th, come next Monday. So um, we thank Multi TV uh, very much for this opportunity. Now to the issue, the road so far. Starting this campaign, preparing to launch the, 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 the rescue mission. Right. Our objective was this time to do something different, to think outside the box. Mm -hmm to go into realms that we have not been before. And that was to engage in, in, in the application of our philosophy in a different form. Reach out more to the people, get the people involved, be more inclusive, because in our collectivity lies our strength. So in our exclusivity, obviously, you become weaker. So we needed to be very inclusive. So we agreed at the National Executive Committee level that this year we are going to develop a manifesto that is going to be a people's manifesto that will target the will and aspirations and the vision, the individual vision of the Ghanaian people. And so when we took that decision at NEC, we set up our manifesto committee and the task we give the manifesto committee, I was part of the manifesto committee though, we decided to move around the country reach out to every single Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. In fact, afford every Ghanaian the opportunity to feel part of the greater mission to rescue this economy from the clueless, incompetent, and corrupt hands of President Tekufuado. When we did the announcement, the MPP came and poo pooed. Yeah, oh, we that, didn't right? have any ideas of our own. We are just going to the market to shop for ideas. In fact, we said that we are very proud that we would go to the people to shop for ideas because the people, Hitherto, I mean, has been powerful all throughout. The history of every society has been a history of success of the people. So we did that. And thankfully, with our speaker session by the flag bearer, calling for public memoranda, calling from concerns from people, old women were sending voice notes on WhatsApp. Mm. Some were walking into our office and they were just pouring out the ideas. We have to put the ideas together, those from the speaker session, those from the, the memos that came in. 
the manifesto committee sat down, did a thorough analysis of every single concern and input that was brought in. Mm. Finally, what we came out with is the almighty people's manifesto. The manifesto that the guys who say, hey, I my tree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the manifesto that has actually destroyed every single campaign plan of the MPP in this year's campaign. Ochi they rushed, yes, Ochinche. They rushed to launch their manifesto. When we did ours, their manifesto just quickly peeled into irrelevance. And up to today, nobody talks about the MPP and nobody knows what is in the MPP manifesto. Now, having launched that solid manifesto that cuts across all sectors, we spoke super massively about health. Our record of the, the, the plethora of you know, health infrastructure that we have, you know, uh, established that we have built across the country. What has earned the President Muhammad, the nation builder name? We thought that there was a need for us to accelerate more. But whilst we accelerate and provide more access to people, we will need to look at affordability because you may provide quality access, but affordability will prevent the people from mm. getting quality of care. But a healthy nation is a worthy nation. And if you want a worthy nation, as we have you know, uh, prescribed, to, 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 to bring to the people of Ghana. We will need to make them healthy. So we are saying, we want to build a prosperous society. So let's make them healthy. But majority of the people are poor. So we must make it affordable so that everybody can have quality of care. So we reviewed the national health insurance. Mm. We realized that the national health insurance, even though it has helped you know, to improve the aff affordability and the utilization of the, 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 the health facilities right. across the country. It has not allowed fully for people to assess health care because sometimes their card is expired, renewing it is a problem. Somebody wants to enroll, getting the card is a problem. So then we decided that let's make primary health care free, universal, so that irrespective of who you are, whether you are a government official, you are a police officer, you are a medical doctor, you are a nurse, you are a teacher, you are a farmer, you are a plantain chip seller, or you are a cocoa seller, you would have equal access to the quality healthcare system that we are building. Mm. Now, by the free healthcare system, what we are saying is that, irrespective of who you are and where you are, if you are sick and you are close to a clinic, you are close to a polyclinic, you are close to a district hospital, you are close to a health center, you are close to a chips compound. Irrespective of the kind of disease or sicknesses that you are having, when you go to those uh, 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 health centers or those you know, medical centers, you are going to be treated free of charge. You are not paying cards, you are not paying for medicine, you are not paying consultation fee. We think that this is the icebreaker for our economy. This is an icebreaker for a solid, healthy economy that can, that can contribute immensely to an accelerated growth. Of Others have described that policy as Mahama care. Yes, I mean, that, that it's Mahama care. I mean, for those elites who would want to coin names for it, it is Mahama care. But for those of us who may not understand Mahama care, it is free hospital. Free hospital. You go to the hospital free. So President Mahama is saying that just next week Monday, when Tuesday dawn comes, and he is declared the president of this economy, so you can, if you want, if you want, you can put your health insurance card aside. If you want, all the budgets that you have allocated for your health care, if you have been visiting some polyclinic regularly every week, put that money aside, use it for something else. You are going to the hospital free of charge. You just walk in, pick a card, see a doctor, get your medicine, and you go home. I think this is an icebreaker. This alone should be able to determine who rules this country. This alone. Is supposed to determine because I know that one major thing that you know debilitates economic growth is when you have a population that is not able to afford healthcare. So when they fall sick, they try to find local remedies at home and they do not go to the mm -hmm. hospital. So those people who are having primary healthcare situations, they 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 try to seek domestic remedies, and the diseases sometimes aggravate. So in that case, that person would have to go to a secondary or a tertiary, you know, a, a medical care center to seek health care. And it becomes even more expensive. 
So the person who was not able to afford 50 CDs to go to the hospital, the polyclinic or the health center, if the disease aggravates and he's supposed to go and pay 5,000, you think he will pay the 5,000? Mm. He will just die. And that is why our left expectancy, even though under President Mahama, when he was president, was able to significantly increase. We still are on the low when you look at sub-Saharan average and the world in, in total. Let, so, let, let's, let's now come to, because of time, let's, yeah. let's now come to a summary of what we are going to provide the Ghanaian people going forward in the area of education. So that we'll just take all this various... Sectors. Very significant. I was, I was quickly moving to education. Education, for example, we have said that we are going to continue the free SHS that we started. The MPP do not understand. And in, obviously because of uh, uh, dishonesty and hypocrisy, they are unable to admit that President Mahama started the free SHS. But records are there to show. You go to Joe online, you go to CTFM online, you look at the videos that we have seen. Why, how President Mahama in 2015 launched the free SHS program. So that one is not in debate. The MPP can go on and delude themselves and, and, and peddle all the falsehood. They can engage in all the hypocrisy that they want. President Mahama started free SHS. They came to add boarding schools and they have done very well because obviously that was where we were heading to. But the problem that it came with was the double track system. And the double track system has had very debilitating effects on the education of the young people. Of course, you can tell yes. from the results. So, so President Mahama is saying that on the 9th, when it is declared and he has become president, immediately the double track system will be scrapped. Now, whilst we scrap the double track system, we have done it before. You remember in 2009 when the, the President Kufu had taken SHS to four years and the fourth year people are entering into the new class and there were no classrooms. Not even a single block had been laid in any institution. We did an emergency construction program that built classroom blocks to be able to take care of the fourth years. We have done it before. We did it under eight months. We are saying that we are going to embark on an emergency construction of schools to be able to take care of the extra people in the double track system. And whilst at it, we are going to make private schools even free. So private senior high schools are also going to be free. So those teachers who are watching me, who are teaching in the private senior high schools, who have been sitting home for almost one year, President Mahama has a message for you. He has good news for you. When you vote for him on 7th of December and he becomes the president, you are going back to work. And this time, your work will not be like before. You would have students to teach, and you would be paid or you'll be remunerated properly, like those who are in the government schools. So President Mama is extending free SHS to the secondary schools, and he's not leaving it there. Every Ghanaian student who is unable to go to senior high school and finds himself in a technical vocational training institute, you are going to go to school free. And not only that, you are going to have access to tertiary technical education or tertiary technical and vocational education, also free. So anybody who will move into the realm of vocational education and technical education, you are just going to have free education throughout. And President Mahama is saying that not all the fingers are equal. Even though the MPP believe in different strokes for different folks, we believe that it is important that everybody has equal access to the national kitty. All disabled Ghanaian students who are entering university are going to school for free. Free throughout the four years. As if that is not enough. President Mahama is telling you that if you just wrote SSE and you have passed your exams, or you have not even passed your exams, there is a bigger hope for you. All those who have passed and they are going to the public universities in 2021, you are going to school free. You are not paying a dime. You are not paying a peso. That is what we call the Fanyinina policy. The Fanyinina te tertiary education policy. So you are not paying anything. Now, for those who are already in school, who are in second year, third year, fourth year, or who are moving to third year, fourth year, and so on, you are going to do the Chimper program. For the first time in the history of Ghana, you are going to pay half, only half of your fees. So if you are a parent, and your son or your daughter is going to school next year, or your son and, or your daughter is in the tertiary institutions next year, is in the university, is in the teacher training college, is in the polytechnic, which is now the technical universities, he is not going to pay absolutely no fees. Or if he's a continuing student, he's going to pay 50% of the fees. I think this is very instructive enough. Mm. This is something that has never happened in Ghana before. And I believe this is something that the people are going to vote for because it is very instructive. Now, let's quickly move to the economy. 
and see how President Mama intends to turn the economy around. Mm. Agribusiness would be a topmost agenda of this government. When we say agribusiness, uh, when you say agribusiness, we are looking at not only improving productivity, but also efficiently transforming the face of the produce that we produce from the farm so that we improve its utilization, we improve the convenience of consumers, we improve the, the, the convenience of movement or transporting, the, the convenience of marketing, and so on and so forth. Now, for those of us who are into agri business and agri economics, we understand the principles of food security very well. Right. Usually, when you say food security to the layman, it's about just providing food, food on, the, on table. the table. But it goes beyond that. It captures affordability, it captures availability, it captures utilization, and it captures convenience of the food. And what President Mahama is saying is that he is putting together a program that will help at the local level, at the rural level, to give some level of impetus to the farmers. So that the farmers know that as they produce, they have a place to offload. So the warehouse receipt system that we introduced when we were in power, which the MPP tried to you know, do propaganda about, yeah. they tried to relaunch, which has not seen the light of day. We are bringing it to reality. And we are saying that all farmers, we must have a program that will offload their produce immediately they move out of the market so that aggregators can pick it at that level. Then, whilst they move the products to the warehouses, they get their money to buy their inputs and start the next farming you know, uh, season. We think that that is the best way to turn our economy around. Because does that include those who are into livestock as well? Yes, it includes those who are into livestock. We have, we have a very comprehensive livestock program. The Ghana you know, uh, Broiler Revitalization Program is one of them. And this time around, we are targeting you know, producing over 2 million birds every year locally so that we do not you know, uh, go out and, and do importation of you know, uh, uh, chicken products. We've seen the highest number of tonnage of rice import under this administration. Meanwhile, they said that they had provided enough uh, incentives to rice farmers in this country. How, what new thing is the NDC bringing on board, particularly for uh, such cereal uh, uh, farmers? First, we would need to go back to our record and how significantly we were able to reduce right importation by almost over a half, you know, in just four years. Now, what we are saying is that we must grow what we eat. If we know that the taste of the Ghanaian people is some particular quality of rice or type of rice, what we need is to allow our farmers to grow. Let's give them incentives. Let's provide, you know, uh, uh, basic, you know, milling machines, communal milling machines, so that at the communal level, Rice farmers, when they harvest, can mill it without going to the bigger, you know, milling companies and being charged huge amounts of money. Now, what we are saying is that beyond the milling machines, we have a program called the AMSEX, the, 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 the mechanization centers. Now, these mechanization centers that we are building, we are hoping that they will provide services for farmers on credit, provide these milling services on credit. So that when the farmers, you know, sell their products or they harvest their products and bring, and they work on them, then they can divide the produce. Then they would sell their part of the produce to get their monies back. Then the farmers will also offload the parts of the produce and, 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 and get their, their monies back. That's a lot of good news for Ghanaian farmers. So that is very significant. But beyond the Ghanaian farmers mm -hmm. or the agricultural economy, it's the mainstream economy, the informal economy. We have said, for example, that contrary to what President Akufuadu wanted to do, wanted to ban salvage vehicles importation and all that, wanted to ban commercial vehicle importation and all that, contrary to that, we are not going to ban salvage vehicles. In fact, we are going to allow all dealers in salvage vehicles to do their business and do it briskly. And not only that, anybody who is into commercial you know, transportation, every commercial vehicle that you import into the country it's going to be duty free. Mm. So you are not going to pay duty on Trotro, your Benz bus. You are not going to pay duty free on your taxes. You are not going to pay duty free on any commercial vehicle that you bring in. I think that is the biggest good news that you know the Ghanaian people have received uh, uh, in the Fourth Republic. You are still live on Minority Caucus here on Joy News uh, TV, and uh, my guest Peter Buamoto Kuno, he's Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, and of course Deputy National Campaign Coordinator for the John Mahama 2020 uh, Campaign. Peter, we don't have enough time, but before we before we even do the wrap up here. Um, corruption, obviously, um, in this year's election is, 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 is a major deal, uh, is a big deal. 
And so going forward, we have seen President Mahama talk about the Operation Stink program. Um, how is that program going to help fight and deal ruthless with the canker of corruption? Fundamental to the Operation Stink program is President Mohammed's readiness and commitment and openness and abhorrence for corruption. That is fundamental. Mm. President Mahama has shown, and indeed he has gone down the history books of Ghana as the only sitting president who successfully prosecuted his own appointee for corruption. And not one, not two, several others. Some are in prison. Mm. His record is impeccable when it comes to his fight against corruption. He doesn't mind whose horse is God. Indeed, President Mahama is the only president whose, whose appointee was, was sacked because he, she had she harbored an intention that she will make some amount of money. Listen, no, she will not steal. She's hoping to make some amount of money. Whether she will run up an up and pump store business to get that money, nobody cared. But she had to be sacked because she had been caught on tape making that statement. Contrary to what we have fast forward in 2020, you have a government that is a chief enabler. That is the corruption clearing agent of his government. Indeed, Martin Namidu didn't mean words at all. He's the mother serpent of corruption. When we say mother serpent of corruption, you know, snake, serpents, they lay a lot of eggs and they produce a lot within a breeding period. Mm -hmm. Now, they actually swallow. When you look at the, what we call the anacondas, they swallow a lot, like they consume a lot and they lay a lot of eggs. What Mati Amidu was saying is that the president has turned himself into a chief breeding house of corrupt appointees, such that he actually enables the people to engage in the corruption itself. In Akan, it is called Konfutechi Amwa. The head of armed robbery gangs is called Konfutechi Amwa. You understand? Mm. So Mati Amidu, who is trusted by the president, indeed trusted by everybody around the president, including Gabi Asayo who actually took to his Twitter to indicate that they trust Martin Amidu to the extent that even before President Akufuado had won the election, he had it in mind that he would appoint him as a, a, a special, special prosecutor. prosecutor. So special prosecutor is saying that the president is the Confuteci Amwa himself. And he is actually breeding the people and training them. You see, when we were growing up in Kaneshi, you know, there are pickpocket gangs mm -hmm. and they have their bosses. Their bosses do not go to the field. So the boys will go and pick pocket and they bring it, then they will sell and give some of the boys. That is what President Akufuado does. So he sends the pickpocketers. So a, a political pickpocketers, they go and, go and pick the pockets. They come and they come and give him some. But as if that is not enough, there are institutions of state that is supposed to fight corruption. One would have thought that somebody who had professed in 2016 that he is incorruptible, he cannot be corrupted, he is even too old to steal. Right. One would have thought that he would allow the state institutions to work. But you know what the chief enabler, the, 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 the mother serpent of corruption had done? Those who are supposed to be fighting the corruption, the mother serpent of corruption has been fighting them than anybody Are there in any this instances? Country. There are so many instances. Look, the Auditor General. I mean, one impeccable man who, you know, whose abhorrence for corruption and whose willingness and commitment to the fight against corruption cannot be overemphasized. President Akufuado made sure that this man is removed unlawfully beyond all the complaints and the disquiet expressed by civil society organizations. The president said, no, how dare you touch an eye of the mother serpent? That is the prime minister, the senior minister, Osafu Mafu, in the crow scandal. What was the crime of uh, Domelovo? Domelovo was celebrated across the country until he touched the eye of the mother serpent, which is the, the Honorable Safu mm. We saw what happened to him. What has ended, uh, what has become of him? He is nowhere to be found. Now let's look at other uh, 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 individuals who have, you know, intended to fight corruption. Anas. In 2016, the president said, you oh, will apply the Anas principle. Right. Now the Anas principle had been applied against him. He has been exposed in collecting bribes. And that has landed innocent Ahmed Swale into his grave. We saw what happened to Manasseh Azuri of, of, of Joy mm -hmm. FM, I mean, formerly of Joy FM. This gentleman had to go into exile. There's a gentleman who worked for Star FM, Edward Adetti, who exposed uh, an appointee of the government at the Flagstaff House 
for okay. getting engaged in, in Bible. Peter, we saw what has happened. Hold on for me. Wait, and wait. the icing on the cake, I know we are moving. The icing on the cake is the forty thousand dollars bribe. We're just going for a quick commercial break. We would we'll come return. back. We'll come okay. back and then right. finish it. Up. You're welcome back. Uh, this is uh, Joy News TV Minority Focus here on Joy News TV. It's the last uh, of the editions. And Peter Wanwo Tokuno is uh, my guest. And uh, in some 10 minutes, we will be wrapping up. Uh, but before we do that, Peter, uh, let's look at December 7th. We have started, we started from where we, 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 we went out to solicit for views from uh, electorates on what should constitute the People's Manifesto. Uh, you have touched on some of the issues happening right now. We've looked at some of the um, promises in the People's Manifesto as well. On voting day, what should Ghanaians expect from the NDC? Well, um, first of all, I think that we have run one of the most exciting and most successful campaigns ever in the history of this country. And compared to our friends in the in the in the MPP, you have seen how you know um, uh, this you know happening. I mean, very low morale, low energy campaign they have run, and um, it's 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 symptomatic of the the effort and the thinking and the vision that you know the vision differentials in the two parties. President Mahama is 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 an amazing visionary. I mean, he's a very impeccable, honest, straightforward man, and. And sometimes I, I get amazed at his energy level. I mean, President Mahama has been on the field like back to back continuous and the energy is still fresh. Some of us, we the young men, when we follow, we, we, we tend to fall sick and all that. I think that it, it's, it's grace, but our campaign has been successful. And the, the, the way the people have received the message, the kind of incitement that has followed, the endorsement that has followed, the willingness, the, the, the commitment, that people have thrown you know, on, onto the campaign. The selflessness and, and, and the dedication is amazing. This can only end in a supermassive first round victory. So what should, uh, what should your electorates do? What should voters do? But, but, but that, that victory will not be chalked if you do not go and vote. Right. So you can be excited. You can say, oh yeah, yeah, number two, too short, too direct. You can do all the two signs. The security men who were doing all the number two signs, you can do all that. But if you do not go and vote, you have not done anything. The journalists who have been intimidated, those, the family of those who have been killed, those who have suffered under President Kufuado's economy, those who have had their jobs taken away from them, the bankers who lost their jobs, or you can make all the noise, the most good customers. If you do not vote, you have not done anything. Thank so I want to use this opportunity to encourage every viewer out there that the time has come. The time has come for you to stand and be counted. This is communal labor. Do not be left out. If you are left out, you do so at your own peril. Look at what is happening at your home. Look at what is happening at your workplace. Look at how you are struggling. Look at how you are suffering. Look at how you are not able to pay your hospital bills. Look at how you are struggling with your education. Look at how you are worried about tomorrow. Look at how your grandfather, who is retired, is struggling with his insurance. Look at your grandfather, who was a cocoa farmer, how he is struggling after retiring. Think about this and remember President Mahama. Remember number two and vote supermassively for President John Dramani Mahama to take the reins of government once again and rescue this economy, bring prosperity for all, provide jobs for all who are willing and able to work. And I am sure at that point, you would have realized that you made the right decision. Indeed, this is all time would allow us. Uh, but of course, I have to let you know that you have to continue the conversation at home. Reach out to your neighbor and remind him or her that this country needs urgent rescue. Ghana needs to be rescued, and that can only be possible, as Peter said, when you go out there to vote for John Dramani Mahama. My name is Peter Bamfo. Many thanks once again, Peter for joining Thanks, us and uh, we wish you the very best. Hopefully on December 7th, we all will see the change that we're looking for. We're out of here.